Uh, Guru, just just give us a little bit here. Your thoughts on on, on what uh, these two guys uh, mean to this squad, have meant to this team, and where their legacy is with the Seahawks. Absolutely, man. This guy's a ledger. I mean, Seahawks with blood and tears. And so they're the epitome of the Pete Arrow, um, John Schneider Arrow. They just magnify the city of Seattle. Just the work, the work hard guys. Not only intelligent guys, but also work hard guys. And, and they were always team first, leaders, character first. You see no character flaws on those individuals. I mean, they are loved by the fans. They are loved by the city of Seattle. They are adopted sons to the city of Seattle. And they will one day have their uh, names in the ring of fame up there in Seattle over our century. That's how big those guys are, especially in both positions. Cam Chancellor might be one of the, the you know, the greatest safeties, uh, at least one, one of the three best safeties to ever wear the Seahawks jersey. And obviously, I think Doug Baldwin as well. You know, you count Steve Larger, and I, and I remember Brian Blade. For the kids, I don't remember Brian. Blade. I remember Before Brian Blade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the old legend. So, and I think Doug Baldwin is probably you know top three as well as far as the receivers to ever um, wear a Seahawks uniform. Now you mentioned uh, these are are. are... Uh, the epitome, if you will, of the uh, of the Pete and John era here in Seattle, the epitome of this team. Uh, both of them sort of scrap heaps. Cam Chancellor coming in the fifth round. Uh, Doug Baldwin uh, unsigned uh, and found and making real uh, contributions to, to the Super Bowl championships, real contributions to the uh, the Super Bowl run, uh, and and real contributions to the to the team. These are these are two guys that will be missed. Uh, Injuries taking them out. These aren't guys that were, were were cut or left. These are some serious injuries. Absolutely, it's just unfortunate to see their career um, cut short. It's a violent game, and those guys played the game so aggressively and so violently. So it's unfortunate that their career ended shortly. But that's part of what what made them mystique. That's kind of what made them. They were tough guys. That's one thing, you know, when they strap it on, you know Cam Chance is going to bring it, and you know offensively Doug Baldwin is going to bring it, and they're going to leave it on the line mentally and physically. Now I want to ask you about uh, Doug Baldwin uh, on his way out here. Doug Baldwin, uh, after his after it was announced that he found his physical and everything, he had a little uh, sort of a letter to his younger self where he gave himself advice. And uh, it was it's actually a pretty good piece at, at work. Yeah, I saw, I saw that on his Twitter, man. That was, that was, that was clever. That was impressive. I yeah, like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. It was, it was a good read and check it out. But I, the one thing I want to ask you about it, uh, uh, Guru, is that they're saying there's a little bit of shade in here. In his letter to the younger self, he uh, he talks about uh, the, the coaching. And he says, uh, you'll, you'll learn good coaches and you'll learn great coaches. And there was a picture of Bevel. And uh, the question is, is he throwing a little bit of shade at, uh, at Pete and Russ uh, over, the, over this thing? Because he doesn't mention them, but he mentions Bevel. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if, you, if, I, if I saw exactly what you saw. I didn't see no mention of the name Bevel. No, 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 it was a photo. It was just a photo. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to be real, Bevel's, you got to realize this. Bevel's was the offensive coordinator, right? Right. He, he built that, that squad. At that time. At, at, at that point. And Bob, Doug Baldwin's career base, the mass of his career was under um, Bevel. Correct? Absolutely. So naturally, if you had the most success, as, you know, with that with, with that regime, you're going to have a feel. And I just love the quote he said on that piece when he says, uh, he says, you will come to appreciate great ones even once others don't. And I don't think that's shade. I think that's giving congratulations and kudos to Bevels than anything else. Because I like what he did to that. You know, even once other things. Because Bevels was a lot or scapegoat for a lot of years here in Seattle. Yeah, his final couple of years, he did become a scapegoat here uh, with the Seahawks. But it's absolutely true that he, he built what they were uh, before then and, and got them got them uh, to to the promised land with his offense. Let's not let's not forget that. But uh, you're right about that. 
All right, so uh, on to the new here, Guru. I want to talk to you about a couple of the, a couple of the kids, a couple of the big signings uh, uh, coming on. So the first one that uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about yet is the Seahawks have signed uh, Ziggy Ansah. Uh, to fill the void uh, at defensive end that was uh, left by Frank Clark. This all turned out to be a, a really great sort of a deal for the Seahawks in my mind. Uh, when they when they traded Clark, uh, we thought uh, initially you know Clark was going to be here, and then when he was traded, they got that extra pick. They flipped that. They turned things around. They end up getting a whole slew of draft picks uh, for Frank Clark uh, in the draft, and then they go and sign Ziggy Ansa. Guru, is this this sounds like a great deal to me. Oh man, of course, let's show this is this hit me to the heart, you know. Obviously, Ziggy, my man, my African man. You know how I feel about my African man? That is my African brother. And I was fortunate enough, you know, when my brother was in Detroit, I was fortunate enough to meet Ziggy and the family, you know, because us being African, so we had that relation. So I was fortunate enough to actually meet um, Ziggy and his family when he, was in, when he was in Detroit after the game. Great, 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 great family, man. Great family. So well, another thing is I love him. Not being biased, but his, his skill set fit exactly the 4-3 scheme. And you know how I love the defense. He fits exactly that pass rushing scheme. And the thing about Ziggy, he's just been hurt. Man, this is going to be his 17th in the league. He, he got that elite pass rushing ability, but he has never really reached it. You know, let, just like last year, he played seven games and finished with four sacks. Injury plagued season. But the year before that, he only played 14 games and he had 12 sacks. So Ziggy had the potential. And he is just like every other year. And the year before that, in 2000, um, let me look at it. 2016, he only played in 13 games and he only had a few sacks. And then in 2015, the only year he played 16 games, he had 14 and a half sacks when he was a pro bowler. So you know he had the potential and he showed the slight um, production. It's just he hasn't been on the field. In a total of 96 max games, he played a total of 80 games out of 96. So he missed a whole year worth of injuries in his career and out of those seasons he had a total of 48 career sacks so that's average eight sacks in the injury flag season so now he's fighting for money because he's in an all incentive contract for seattle so i expect him to have one of them double digit sacks absolutely man what you're telling me is that every other year this guy goes nuts get him in the odd number years we got him in the odd number years this sounds great to me uh, this is also one of those Boogie Cousins deals, you know. We uh, we uh, we talked a little bit about this on TTR. That this is this is a Boogie Cousins deal. This is a, a win-win for both sides. You know, this is a chance for him to get back in. He's probably going to miss a couple of games at the beginning of the year, and uh, and his chance to come back in and show the league who he is at a good price for the Seahawks to uh, to get him to come back in and show the league who he is for that for that push uh, if, if he can do it. I, I hey, love I love the signing. It's called what you call, you know. Zero risk, all reward. Absolutely. Zero risk, all reward. Beautiful deal by Schneider. I love it because, like I said, it's all basically incentive ladder um, contract. So Ziggy basically is in a commission. You know, like my man, Marku, who's a great, great salesman, would tell you. He's on a commission. So you know what? He's going to work his ass up to hit that commission goal. That's what Ziggy's going to try to do, man. I hope so, man. I hope so. He didn't show up last season, so I really hope so. So hope that seven games, put it like this: seven games, four sacks, man. You do the math. You're a smart guy. He played seven games and got four sacks. That's what I like. That odds, man. He got a shot at That's it. I like, I like it being an odd year. I'm going to run with that. Also, he was on the Lions last year. They were terrible. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's talk about uh, the the kids, uh, new guys, kids wise, and that is of course uh, I want to talk about uh, DK Metcalf, who's the uh, young receiver they picked up in the draft uh, uh, to uh, to I I guess fill the void that they knew Baldwin was going to leave. Uh, but uh, DK Metcalf is huge when you see him in the photos, and I hear that he's really really impressive down at a uh, rookie camp. Really impressed at rookie camp this year. Absolutely, he's a big body. And, and he obviously ran and killed the NFL combine. And look, just, you, I, I've seen this shirtless one. I don't know if you've seen the social media clip of him taking his shirt off with, um, when he went to go see Pete Carroll on a pre-draft interview. But anyhow, this kid has high, high ceilings. Yeah, he looks like an Avenger. How... 
he looks like the guru. So, you know, he looks like me when I when I used to do my thing. You know, just just throwing it out there. Any yeah, other? that's it. <laughs> DJ Mecca, I love his I love his ability, and I think the fact that he's not a great 